I want to share with you today concerning the Holy Spirit. I just recently released a short ebook called Spirit Filled Jesus, which simply goes into the topic of how Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. And so you can download it free of charge on my website. Um, there's also audio version of it. There's a physical book and as well as there's electronic one. And we'll drop the links in just a second. But check it out. May God bring a blessing to you through that material. But what I want to talk to you about for just a few moments right now is three dimensions to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. The three dimensions to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship with you and you can have a relationship with Him but your relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot go further beyond His relationship with you. For example, if I want to have a relationship with the President of the United States, Joe Biden, okay I can have a great desire I can feel like I qualify to have a relationship with him but honestly most likely that's never gonna happen why because it's a one-way street it's me desiring something he is in such a high position he occupies such a high office if he doesn't have an interest to have a relationship with me honestly it's completely my desire, my passion, my eagerness, my um, whatever efforts I put in towards having a relationship with him will fall flat and they will not succeed because he doesn't want to have a relationship with me, okay? Now, Joe Biden has a son, okay? His son, on the other hand, he can have a relationship with his father. In fact, it's his father who desires to have a relationship with his son and he is the initiator of that relationship so is with the Holy Spirit you must understand before we talk about anything of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is the initiator of a relationship with you you are not the initiator that's why the Bible says in Corinthians that the love of God the grace of Jesus and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. That means that He initiates the communion. At the same way God initiates love, Jesus initiates grace, the Holy Spirit initiates fellowship and communion. Come on somebody drop that in the chat below. The Holy Spirit wants relationship with you. More than you desire relationship with him this is the baseline this is where everything starts from if you don't understand this if you don't receive this everything else is secondary all the other things that I'm going to mention right now are honestly going to be secondary you have to understand is the Holy Spirit desires relationship with you he's interested in you he wants to have relationship with you the three facets or three dimensions of the Spirit's relationship with us goes as follows. The Holy Spirit is with us, the Holy Spirit is in us, and the Holy Spirit is upon us. The Holy Spirit is with us, the Holy Spirit is in us, and the Holy Spirit is upon us. Let's dive into the verses in the Bible where it says that. In John chapter 14 verse 17 it says the following, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him for he dwells with you. Come on somebody drop that in the chat. He dwells with you and he will be in you. That is in John chapter 14 verse 17 and I was reading ESV translation. So he dwells with you and he will be in you. So Jesus is saying this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, He dwells with you. So He already was with the disciples. He lived with them because He was in Jesus. But Jesus is saying this Holy Spirit, He dwells with you and He will be in you. That means He's, he's not in them yet. He's with them, dwells with them, He's just not in them yet. So the first dimension of the relationship of the Holy Spirit with you is that He's with you. He's with you on the outside influencing you toward the gospel. He is with you to reveal Jesus. He is with you to convict you of sin. He is with you to convict you of unbelief. He is with you. Come on somebody drop that in a comment. He is with me to lead me to salvation. He is with me 
to lead me to Jesus. He is with me to convict me of unrighteousness, to convict me of unbelief. He is with me. That's why an unbeliever can experience the Holy Spirit's presence in their life and they can say, man, I felt God. I was riding in the, in the car or sometimes they say after the party, I was so high but God came and God touched me and we as Christians were like, man, that's just not possible, man. You, you were so messed up. You were so, so deep and down in sin but actually the Holy Spirit was with them there. The first instance we see of that is in the book of Genesis where the Bible says where the Bible says that the Holy Spirit hovered over the darkness. He hovered over all of the things that were happening. Darkness, void and brokenness that was happening on this earth. The Holy Spirit was there. He is with us. So Holy Spirit is with every person on this earth right now. He's with sinners. He's with people who are atheists. He's with Muslim people. He's with Hindus. He's with Buddhists. He is with religious people. He is with people who are in pornography. He is with people who are on drugs. He's with the presidents. He's with everyone so that he can bring them to Christ. He's around them trying to create circumstances where they can meet Jesus. So that's the first relationship of the Holy Spirit with us. He's with us to bring us to salvation. Come on, drop that in the comment. He is with me to bring me to salvation. Number two, somebody say number two. Are you ready for number two? If you are ready for number two, drop that in the comment. Give me one second. Um, the Holy Spirit is in me to make me more like Jesus. So disciples had the Holy Spirit with them and Jesus says one day he will be in you. Now when did the Holy Spirit came within disciples? Let's read that in the Bible. In John chapter 20 verse 22. John chapter 20 verse 22 it says, when he had said this he breathed on them and said to them receive the Holy Spirit. So after the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus meets with his disciples and he He breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit. Now he was already with them but now this Holy Spirit came to live in them. The price for sin was paid. Jesus was already crucified. He was resurrected and now Jesus, the word spirit is the breath. The breath of God entered into these disciples. It reminds me of the first time God breathed. It was in Genesis when God created Adam out of the ground and the Bible says that Adam was just a body and God <sighs> breathed the spirit into Adam and Adam became living soul. But in here God the Son breathes His Spirit, the Holy Spirit into His disciples and thus they receive the Holy Spirit. This is so amazing. The Holy Spirit comes to live in you. He indwells. He takes residence. He lives in your spirit at the day of your salvation. Not when you speak in tongues and we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to baptize us today and we're going to talk about in a moment what that is. But the Holy Spirit comes to live in you at the moment of your salvation. Disciples in here did not speak in tongues. Disciples in here after the resurrection they simply were with Jesus and Jesus breathed into them. So they didn't speak in tongues. They simply received the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled them. The Holy Spirit came inside of them and the Holy Spirit took residence inside of them and only later on they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit which we're going to talk about in a second. What, what does happen what happens when the Holy Spirit comes to live in you? When He comes to live inside of you, He produces within you a character of Jesus. He produces within you the fruit of the Spirit. He comes to live inside of you so He can make you more like Jesus. He comes to live inside of you so He can convict you of righteousness. He comes to live inside of you so that He can change your attitude. He comes to live inside of you so that He can fill you with His presence. He comes to live inside of you so that He can fill you with His love. He comes to live inside of you so He can bear witness that you are a child of God. He comes to live inside of you so He can bear a witness that you are going to heaven. 
He comes to live inside of you so that you can glorify Jesus. He comes to live inside of you so he can glorify Jesus and exalt him in you. He comes to live inside of you so he can help you to live a Christian life. You have a helper. You have somebody that you can call on for help and he is not very far from you. He's not busy. He doesn't have his phone turned off. He's not on a vacation. He doesn't, he's not going to snooze you. He's always going to be ready to hear you. His name is the Holy Spirit. He is in you. If you're a believer, you have him. If you are born again, he resides in you. He takes place. He lives. You are his property. You are his prime real estate. In fact, you are his address. The Holy Spirit has an address and the zip code. You know what that address and the zip code is? It's you. What you see in the mirror, that is his address. He lives inside of you. One of the greatest truths you can ever experience in your life, not just know but experience, is the Holy Spirit is God, He is a person and He lives within me. The third dimension to the relationship of the Holy Spirit with me is the Holy Spirit comes upon me. So He's with me to lead me to Jesus. He is in me to make me more like Jesus and He is upon me to empower me for ministry or service. So He is with me to bring me to salvation. He is in me to bring sanctification. He is upon me for service, for ministry, for healing the sick, evangelizing, preaching the gospel, casting out devils and leading ministry. Let me give you the verse for that. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, but not many days from now, Jesus says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has, has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So Jesus is saying to his disciples who had the Holy Spirit with them, he came in them and then Jesus says you're about to experience something else. He's about to come upon you but during this time it will be something different. You will receive power to be my witnesses and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit upon me is for service. The Holy Spirit in me is for sanctification and the Holy Spirit is with me before I meet Jesus for salvation, bringing me to salvation. So He's with me before I get saved. He is in me at salvation and then He comes upon me for ministry and for service. Today ministry is done with degrees but the way Jesus intended ministry to be done is with the anointing. We're not against degrees. I think we need to have proper biblical education and knowledge. We need to be thoroughly equipped in the words of God, in the doctrine of God. But nothing takes place of the power of the Holy Spirit. Nothing replaces the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage you as you are watching right now, those of you on Zoom, I want you to get ready because we're about to pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit upon you. First and foremost, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because the first work of the Holy Spirit is to introduce you to Jesus. When you introduce to Jesus, you become a temple. You're no longer a tomb. You become a dwelling place, not of demons, but a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. The second question I want to ask you is, have you yielded to the presence of the Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life? Have you allow the Holy Spirit to form within you a character, to form within you an attitude that glorifies Jesus. And the third question is, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit? Have you received the power? Have you allowed the Holy Spirit to not just fill you but to overflow and come upon you? Now, Baptism into the Holy Spirit is not for tongues. It's for power and for purpose. 
tongues are byproduct. Now we're going to pray for in filling with tongues. We're going to pray that he will fill you and you will receive the prayer language. But I want to encourage you that the real purpose of the baptism into the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit upon a person is to serve. If you don't intend to serve, if you don't plan to pray for the sick, if you don't intend to pray and to cast out devils, if you do not desire or intend to share your faith with your neighbors, with your friends and with other people, then please understand you don't need the filling or the coming of the Holy Spirit. It's like a person who is asking God for an airplane but they refuse to travel. It's like a person who is asking God for a car, they just refuse to drive. Is asking God for a bicycle, they, they refuse to ride. And so the power of the Holy Spirit is for ministry. It's not for tongues only. It's not only to enrich your spiritual life. That's why you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But the feeling, in filling of the Holy Spirit, the overpowering of the Holy Spirit in your life is for ministry. That means that when you receive that, you have to have an outlet. You have to have an outflow. You have to have a somewhere where you can put it to practice, if I can say. Because if you're going to keep it to yourself, very soon you will see no results. You will see no miracles. You will see no power. You will see no power. Not because you don't have any power. It's just that power needs to have something. Like if you have power in your house and you don't plug anything into the outlets, if you don't connect the lights, if you don't connect your AC, if you don't connect your refrigerator, if you don't connect your microwave, if you don't connect your... Uh, vacuumer into it it's just going to be a power that is going to be untapped and it will make no difference in your house it will be cold it will be dark and your house honestly will be kind of useless but well, how power works is when you plug stuff in so today as we're going to pray I believe the Holy Spirit will come upon you for those of you who are desiring that power for those of you who are desiring to do God's will God's way. For those of you who are tired of doing ministry on your own in your own strength, I believe the Holy Spirit will come upon you today as He came in the day of Pentecost. But I ask you that you make a promise to God. I ask you that you make a decision right now that you will not live for yourself, that you will not live just for your spiritual growth and your spiritual development, but you will leverage your life for the purpose of seeing people saved, seeing people healed, seeing people delivered. That you will use your social media to tell other people about Jesus. That you will use your mouth in the gym, in the coffee shop, in the neighborhood to tell other people about Jesus. That when you go to school, that you will tell other people about Jesus. That when you see, see sick people, you will pray for people who are sick so that they will be healed. Because then this power will flow. Otherwise, this power will stay in you and you will after a while come to the realization, I ain't got any more power. I don't have any power. My friend, you probably do. You're just not using that power that the Lord has given to you by leveraging your life to serve the needs of people around you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive something, drop that amen in a comment. If you receive something on Zoom, those of you on Zoom, wave your hands. Those on the screen one and the screen two, wave your hands. We're about to pray in just a moment. If a um, short little encouraging message, the rest of it, I can speak this whole message today, but we're going to be here till the morning. So the rest of it, you can go and download it on the Spirit Filled Jesus uh, ebook or a physical book or listen to the audio of it. And it will, I truly believe it will bless you tremendously. I just wanted to give you a short encouragement today about three dimensions of the relationship of the Holy Spirit with us today. For those of you that are on Zoom, I want you to stretch your hands like this right now. And I want you to begin to pray right now. Let's begin to pray. I believe that probably every one of you there know Jesus but if you don't know Jesus pray this with me if you are far from Jesus if you're on YouTube or Facebook and you are far from the Lord Jesus Christ let's pray first and foremost cover this base repent of your sins right now and and come to know the Lord just say this out loud with me say Lord Jesus Christ come on go ahead and repeat that out, out loud after me say Lord Jesus Christ I am a sinner please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your blood I surrender my whole life to you and from this day forward I promise to follow you the best I know how 
fill me with your Holy Spirit. Enter into my heart and make me new. Make me yours. Oh Holy Spirit, change me. My attitude, my words, and my behavior. I surrender to you right now. In Jesus' name.